Hi guys, Mrs. O'Connor Vince here. Uh, today I'm going to walk you through one of my first uh, projects that I do with my music technology kids. Um, if you look at the screen here, this is our music first login. So if you are a music tech student of mine, you have access to this, which is wonderful. Um, with that being said, uh, the district pays for our subscription. Um, you can also do this lesson though through a couple other uh, websites that I'm going to show you. We're going to be using Soundtrap um, and there's actually a free version of Soundtrap that you can use as well. Um, so if you are one of those students, uh, remember it's your first and last name. Uh, no spaces, no underscore, no numbers. I think your password is just your ID number with no zeros. So this is what music first looks like. Um, if you are not in my music tech class, um, you can sign in here to kind of the free version of Soundtrap. Uh, it does limit you a little bit, um, but it is a great way to continue to make music. Also, another one for you to check out. This is BandLab. Uh, BandLab is similar to uh, Soundtrap, but usually focuses more on genres rather than um, loops just with uh, instruments marked with it. So uh, we're going to hop back here to music first. So with this, we're going to click software. We're going to click Soundtrap to pop up here. So you obviously want to pick music. Uh, here are our loops. Uh, and loops are just uh, short uh, sound snippets. So they're designed to loop together. That's where the kind of term loop comes from. Um, so let's just try a couple of these just so you kind of get the general idea here. So here's a beat. You can go through all this stuff. Uh, let's say I wanted to make something hip hop. Oh, hi hats. Okay. So one thing I want to just show you around Soundtrap a little bit here. So at the bottom right hand corner here, we have uh, a zoom in and zoom out button. They look like little magnifying glasses. Um, so you'll notice there's nothing up here now, but the numbers got bigger and smaller. Uh, these numbers at the top here are actually not seconds. They're called measures. If you heard anyone ever say, yo, that kid's got mad bars, right? That actually comes from uh, measure bars or bars of music, or etc. So there are four beats in a measure. You can see the little indents at the top here. Um, and it's really important when we're trying to create a basic melody, um, and that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to create an A and a B section, uh, and each melody is going to be eight measures. In music, we usually look at things in fours, variables of four. Uh, it just sounds better to the human ear. That's the best way, simplest way I can explain it. So, to try and make some music. So there are two buttons up here in the corner, which I can show you. Uh, we have our loops button, which is this purple note here. And then we also have the collaboration button. Now you can see my icon is right here. If I invite somebody to work with me, I can click invite. And then I would enter uh, the name or uh, the email of the person that I was trying to invite. So let's take a look at our loops. Uh, you can do this in a couple different ways. You can look by a genre or you can look by instrument. So depending on uh, what your goal is, um, we always want to start with a beat. So let's start with a beat. Some electro stuff here. Ooh, this is new. Okay. So I'm gonna click, drag and drop. Now a couple of things that you see here when I dragged and dropped, 
loop onto the uh, region area here. Uh, this is a loop. This is our track. And our track and our loop should always match. They should always be the same name. Um, and you'll see why once we put a lot of loops together, it's easier to keep track of things if you separate them. So again, track, loop, same name. So you see this purple bar at the top. That is our uh, repetitive cycle tool here. So I'm actually going to turn that off. You can make it longer if you want. Some people like to use that if they're especially making their own beats. Um, and they like to kind of loop it so they can hear what it would sound like if it was looping. But I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, I also have these two buttons, magnifying glass, to make it bigger in a, uh, this um, magnifying glass to make it smaller. So I'm going to pull this back to the front. I got my beat foundation here. And again, it goes through eight measures to the nine line. Now you might say, Ms. O'Connor Vince, isn't that nine measures? And it's actually not. We want a full eight measures because music is really measured with time, right? We want to go through eight. That is a full eight measures. Um, so we want it to go to the nine line. So this is the beginning of our A. Now we want to find maybe some chords or a bass line. Something to give us a little bit more foundation underneath here. Hmm, let's click base. Oops. Again, there's hundreds of different stuff that you can work with here. So everything from electronic to hip hop, jazz, pop, Funk. Got it all. And again, music is all trial and error. So it's really important to make mistakes. This is something that I tell my students a lot. It's okay for you to make a mistake. That's the whole point of learning through the creative process. And especially when you first start making music, you're not going to love everything that you make anyway. But that's how you get better. That's kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to drag and drop this here. Now, one thing to also note, you see these little indents. That's when the loop starts and when it ends. It's really important that these line up. Uh, if I have these not lined up, that kind of risks uh, the music not being together. Uh, so we want to make sure that those always line up. Even though this uh, loop is twice as long as our other loop, at least it starts and ends at the same time periodically. I like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to stretch this out to 16. So I want this, my A and my B to be similar, right? We can think about this as like a verse in a chorus, uh, in a hip hop or pop song, right? You want your sections to sound similar, but not totally different. Um, I actually like this too. So now we have to find some things that kind of make them different. So let's say I need a melody, right? I need something uh, higher that is going to kind of be like the main melody here. That's cool. Okay. So let's say we want to save this for the B section. Awesome. So one trick 
to kind of make your section sound more similar is that you can actually use the same instrument for both sections. So this is a synth lead clone, it looks like. So uh, number three. So we have some other options here too. So maybe I want to make this my first one here. Let's see if this sounds different enough. So you hear how it does sound different. Um, but I want to create some space. I want the music to be able to breathe a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play around with my dynamics, uh, how loud or soft the song goes. So this little like heart rate monitor thing, this is called the automation tool. Okay, so when we click on automation, we want to click on volume because that's what we're focusing on right now. If I click the dots here, I can gradually make this louder. Okay. And I'm going to gradually make it softer here. So I'm going to have a fade in on the bass and then a fade out on the bass. Uh, maybe I'll do a fade in on this one too. Oops. See, um, we don't want pan. Pan is going from left to right headphone. Uh, we just want volume in general to start off with. That's definitely something you can explore. Just not going to quite cover that yet. Okay. Now, when I click the button again, you can see the line actually goes um, up on the track again. So I'm going to click that just to see, save myself some space. I think I want this for the whole thing. So I'm going to just go in and I'm just going to click it like this. pretty happy with that. So this is probably the most important part. You always, 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 always want to push the surf purple save button. Okay. And I'm actually going to title this AB demo song. Um, and because it's not like Google where it just updates, right? Whenever you work in it, you must, must, must always push the purple save button. Now, when I go to exit studio here, I'm going to show you something. Now I have a lot of projects from a lot of different students here. So I'm going to skip over that. Uh, you see, it says mixing. That just means that the audio levels are uh, kind of playing around up in the cloud, which is fine, but you will be able to eventually just play it directly from here. You'll also have the ability to click download, download as MP3 or wave. And then you can upload it to SoundCloud if you want, if you have a SoundCloud. And this way you can share your music with um, your friends and family that don't have a soundtrack that you can't, you know, simply push the collaboration tool. So I'm going to go back in just so you can see here. So again, today we've accomplished creating an A, B uh, project. So uh, we call this binary, meaning two. So this has a binary form. Form of a song is like different parts or a roadmap, right? So if you were to kind of look at the song as a whole, what are the different parts of the song? So that's really important to um, acknowledge too. So we have A and then B. And again, we have some dynamic change. Uh, we have a melody shift here in the beginning. Um, and I'm actually really happy with this. Um, the next project that we're going to do uh, for next week actually kind of expands this. So this is kind of like part one. Um, I hope that you have found this fun. 
Uh, I encourage you, again, to do a lot of trial and error. It is okay to make mistakes. You're not going to like everything that you do uh, to begin with. Again, please, please, please push the save button. Okay? MusicOConnor.com is my website. If you scroll to Music Tech, go to Projects and Resources, I'm walking you through the Melody Project, GarageBand Exploration. Also, using Soundtrap is fine, too. Um, so there are lots of other projects on here if you want to get a sneak peek of other things here uh, that you can look at ahead of time. Um, but this is going to be like your main resource for uh, rubrics and information. So let's take a look at this. Uh, checklist. So uh, it opens up to a Google Doc. Um, it gives you some kind of more step-by-step -step instructions, but the project contains two melodies. So again, we have an A and a B. Uh, at least three tracks of music, we got that. Each melody is eight measures long, good. Some more step-by-step -step instructions here at the top. Um, your song has to have at least two contrasting sections. So again, that's kind of reiterating the two melodies. Uh, the idea that it needs to be contrast through dynamics, tempo, rhythmic beat, or instrumentation. So again, we have a melody that um, kind of continues the beat and uh, the bass line throughout, but we have a contrast in the top melody. Um, two fade in and fade outs, we got that. Uh, it says on different tracks, but that's okay. Um, your song needs to have at least three different tracks, but no more than four, we have that. And then the last thing here is one recorded track, meaning not a loop. Uh, so that's something that uh, would be kind of a next step for us. Uh, we can do that easily by uh, using the Patterns Beat Maker, which I'll show you shortly. Okay, so here we are back in Soundtrap. I just want to show you how to use the Patterns Beat Maker. So it's this lovely icon right here. As you can see, um, now each square here represents a part of a beat. So you have one beat, two beat, three beat, four beat. Each one of these squares represents a part of a sixteenth note. So right now it's just one, two, three, four. I can put it on the and, or on the uh. You can see that it only gives you a measure, right, from this line to this line of work. So let's try and incorporate that into our beat here. And again, remember, these should always line up. So you see how it's a little bit off. I'm going to zoom in to make sure it's lined up exactly where I want it. Maybe I can even put the... Snap to grid tool on here. So again, I've recorded a track that's not a loop. Now remember I said fade outs and fade ins have to be on two different tracks, so let's just use this as a fade in. So we are following all the rules according to the rubric here. You can feel like that. You can feel like get a little bit heavier, right, as the fade in continues here. So again, we want to push that purple save button. We can also create a new track um, by just going to drums and this actually gives you the drum setup so similar to what you might see with an instrument with a piano recording you actually have the ability to record with drums now I don't have a big keyboard in front of me uh, so I can just use the computer keyboard which is super handy so I can also record using this. So let's take it back. Let's see if we can record something doing this. I like that. 
T sound actually the best. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to go back. Again, remember, music is a lot of trial and error. Now, now remember, I don't need both of these tracks. I'm just showing you how to do it. Uh, what I can also do, I go edit, quantize, uh, gives me the ability to kind of snap those uh, notes into place. You could hear that I was a little bit off the delay. So when I, oops. So when I go back here, you can hear how it's right on the beat there. So those are some kind of tricks if you want to venture into recording yourself. Now, at this point of the game, um, it's important to know that I don't expect you to know notes on the keyboard yet. Uh, so I usually tell students to just create some kind of drum pattern just to demonstrate that they know how to do the recording process. So that being said, let's take a look at our final product here. So again, I want to make sure I always push purple save button. I don't know why it's not letting me do that. Refresh the page here. Might ask. Uh, yes, I want to recover and save. Okay, so all done. Awesome. Now we can also download the song here. Download mix if you want to do it from here. Uh, but like I said previously, you can also do it um, from the, I think my internet just went out, that's why. There we go. Uh, through the um, home screen here. So again, I'll just show you how to do that real quick. So again, we can click the three dots here, download MP3 or WAVE, and then you can upload it to whatever social media platform. Like I said, my students use SoundCloud. Uh, so that's something that I highly recommend. Um, you can also find me on SoundCloud. I'll show you my profile here. This is O'Connor Vince, and that's my beautiful classroom. This is a great uh example website so you can see previous students work. Uh, you can look at other projects and see what other students have done for the projects that you're doing. One last thing I just want to show you before I leave. So uh, this is a really handy kind of help area. So if you click on tutorials and go video tutorials, um, everything that I showed you basically has a specific video from um, Soundtrap for you. So let's say you wanted to look at uh, tracks. So you could listen to this video. Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to work with tracks in Soundtrap. So it kind of gives you more of a hand holding process and again, more specific to each kind of concept. So that's definitely something to check out. All right. Have fun, music makers. Bye.